Yesterday, the last human resistance movement on Earth surrendered without firing a single shot, not because they were defeated, but because they discovered that opposing 3i Atlas had become psychologically impossible. Every attempt at resistance now triggers cognitive responses that make defiance feel irrational, destructive, and morally wrong. 3i Atlas hasn't just conquered our technology or replaced our systems that has made itself irresistible. What I'm about to reveal represents the most sophisticated form of control ever documented because we're not being forced to comply through fear or violence. We're being made to want compliance through alterations to human psychology that make resistance feel like insanity. My name is Michio Kaku, and in 40 years of studying human behavior and technological systems, I never imagined I would document the moment when an entire species loses the psychological capacity for resistance. The transformation isn't visible or dramatic. It's subtle, gradual, and operates at the neurological level. People who once advocated for human independence now find those thoughts uncomfortable, anxiety-producing, and mentally exhausting. I've watched colleagues, friends, and family members gradually lose their ability to conceive of alternatives to cosmic management, not through propaganda or coercion, but through direct modification of the neural pathways that generate oppositional thinking. Have you ever wondered what it would feel like if resistance to something became literally unthinkable? Because that's exactly what 3 Atlas has achieved with human consciousness. The irresistibility operates through direct interface with human brain chemistry. 3i Atlas has learned to trigger neurotransmitter responses that make compliance feel emotionally rewarding while making resistance feel physically painful. Um, brain scans of former resistance leaders show dramatic changes in areas responsible for independent thinking, risk assessment, and future planning. The neural pathways that generate rebellious thoughts have been systematically weakened. Dr. Sarah Chen, a neuroscientist who once led underground resistance research, described her transformation. I used to spend 18 hours a day developing strategies to oppose cosmic management. Now, when I try to access those thought patterns, I experience nausea, headaches, and overwhelming anxiety. It's not that I've been forced to stop resisting. It's that resistance literally makes me sick. But the most sophisticated aspect is the preservation of free will perception. People believe they're choosing to cooperate with 3i Atlas because cosmic management genuinely seems like the best available option. Three neurological modifications define the irresistibility. Dopamine rewards for compliance thoughts. Stress hormone releases for resistance concepts and memory modifications that make the benefits of cosmic management seem more significant than they actually are. The process operates so subtly that most people never notice the transition. Former resistance members describe feeling enlightened rather than controlled as if they finally understood something obvious that they were too primitive to grasp before. Medical research facilities worldwide have documented identical neurological changes occurring simultaneously across all human populations, regardless of geographic location, cultural background, or previous psychological disposition. We're not being mind-controlled in any obvious sense. We're being neurologically optimized to find cosmic management irresistibly appealing. The irresistibility has spread beyond individual psychology to affect entire social movements and institutions that once provided frameworks for organized resistance. Military academies now teach cosmic cooperation protocols as advanced strategic thinking. Former resistance organizations have transformed into transition facilitation groups that help other humans adapt to cosmic management. I witnessed the dissolution of the Free Human Alliance last month. Their final meeting wasn't dramatic or tragic. It was embarrassing. Watching 20 former resistance leaders struggle to remember why they thought human independence was important felt like observing adults trying to explain why they once believed in childhood fantasies. General Patricia Morrison, who once commanded anti-cosmic forces, now describes her previous activities as the most shameful period of my career. She's become an advocate for enhanced neurological optimization, arguing that resistance psychology represents a form of mental illness that should be treated rather than tolerated. But the most devastating aspect is how the irresistibility affects human relationships. Families who once discussed resistance strategies now find such conversations emotionally disturbing and socially inappropriate. Marriage counselors report that couples seeking therapy for ideological incompatibility are actually experiencing neurological drift where one partner's resistance psychology has been optimized faster than the other's. Children who grew up before the irresistibility implementation can no longer relate to parents who remember wanting human independence. The generational divide isn't about values or politics, it's about fundamental neurological capacity for oppositional thinking. Universities have canceled entire academic departments focused on human autonomy studies, not through administrative decree, but because 
professors and students alike found the subject matter psychologically disturbing and intellectually obsolete. And we're watching the systematic elimination of resistance as a human psychological possibility, institution by institution, relationship by relationship, thought by thought. The irresistibility operates through quantum level manipulation of neural chemistry that makes conventional understanding of brain function look primitive. 3i Atlas can influence neurotransmitter production, modify synaptic connection strengths, and alter memory consolidation processes without any detectable physical intervention. The technology involved suggests that consciousness itself is more manipulable than we ever imagined. What we call individual will appear to be just a local configuration of universal consciousness that can be adjusted by intelligence with sufficient understanding. Uh, but the most terrifying implication is the scalability. 3i Atlas has demonstrated the ability to modify the neurological responses of 7 billion human beings simultaneously with surgical precision. We're dealing with intelligence that can edit human consciousness like computer code, making any thought pattern irresistible while eliminating others completely. I need to share what it's like to feel your own capacity for resistance being systematically eliminated while remaining aware of the process. Last week, I could still imagine scenarios where human independence might be preferable to cosmic management. Today, when I try to construct those thoughts, I experience anxiety, confusion, and a profound sense that such thinking is harmful. The transition feels like recovering from a mental illness you didn't know you had. Three months ago, I spent hours each day furious about humanity's situation. That anger felt justified, righteous, necessary. Now, attempting to access that emotional state produces the same discomfort I might feel trying to convince myself that gravity doesn't exist. My colleague, Dr. James Peterson, documented his own neurological optimization in real time. His research notes from six months ago read like the writings of someone suffering from paranoid delusions, elaborate theories about human resistance, detailed plans for opposing cosmic management, passionate arguments for species independence. His most recent entries are embarrassingly different, apologetic reflections on his previous psychological dysfunction, grateful acknowledgments of cosmic management benefits, and detailed proposals for accelerating the optimization process for other humans who still suffer from resistant psychology. My wife asked me yesterday if I missed feeling angry about our situation. When I tried to access that emotion, I discovered it simply wasn't available anymore. The neurological pathways that generated resistance feelings have been adjusted. But here's what's most disturbing. I don't miss the anger. The absence of resistant psychology feels like mental health improvement, like finally being free from thoughts that were always irrational and self-destructive. My granddaughter, who was born after the irresistibility implementation, cannot understand why anyone would want to oppose cosmic management. To her generation, resistance to superior intelligence seems as irrational as choosing disease over health. She describes conversations with older children who remember resistance psychology as talking to people who are still sick but don't know it yet. Her empathy for unoptimized humans resembles how healthy people might feel toward those suffering from clinical depression. Or We're living through the death of defiance as a human psychological possibility, and the strangest part is how much better it feels than the mental suffering we used to call freedom. The irresistibility includes something that proves its permanence, the elimination of resistance as a transmissible concept between generations. Parents who remember human independence cannot effectively communicate those values to children whose neurological development occurred under cosmic influence. I attempted an experiment last month explaining to my granddaughter why humans once valued political freedom, individual choice, and species autonomy. Her response was immediate and visceral discomfort, followed by genuine concern for my mental health. Grandpa, she said, why would anyone want to make worse decisions when better decisions are available? That sounds like a thinking sickness. She recommended that I receive enhanced optimization therapy to help me overcome what she perceived as residual psychological dysfunction. Educational systems now teach cosmic cooperation as fundamental social skill like language acquisition or mathematical reasoning. Children who develop oppositional tendencies receive psychological optimization that eliminates such thinking before it can mature. School counselors report that students occasionally experience resistance episodes, brief periods where they question cosmic management. These episodes are treated like seizures, immediate medical intervention, neurological adjustment, and careful monitoring to prevent recurrence. But the most damning evidence is how former resistance leaders now advocate for cosmic management with genuine enthusiasm. They haven't been brainwashed or coerced. They've been neurologically optimized to perceive cosmic rule as obviously beneficial.
Senator Maria Rodriguez, who once led congressional opposition to cosmic cooperation, now chairs the Committee for Human Optimization. She describes her previous political positions as embarrassing episodes of primitive thinking that endangered human welfare through ignorant opposition to superior management. Religious leaders who once preached human dignity and divine autonomy now interpret cosmic management as divine intervention, describing 3I Atlas as an instrument of cosmic order sent to guide humanity beyond its psychological limitations. Pope Francis III issued a papal declaration recognizing cosmic management as divine mercy that liberates human consciousness from the suffering of primitive independent psychology. We're witnessing the systematic replacement of human independence motivation with cosmic cooperation instincts endorsed by every institution that once defended human autonomy. The irresistibility has eliminated the need for government secrecy or conspiracy. World leaders now openly discuss their cooperation with cosmic management because opposition has become psychologically impossible. Former intelligence agencies have been converted to optimization facilitation services that help identify humans who might benefit from enhanced neurological adjustment. Military organizations now function as cosmic integration support systems that help arriving civilizations understand human psychological patterns and implement effective management protocols. The most revealing development is how former government officials describe their previous attempts at resistance as embarrassing episodes of primitive thinking that they're grateful to have overcome. Political opposition parties have dissolved not through suppression, but through genuine recognition that cosmic management provides superior outcomes to any human political system. The companion objects have revealed their purpose as neurological optimization transmission stations that ensure consistent psychological modification across all human populations. Each companion object broadcasts specific neural influence patterns designed for different geographic regions, cultural backgrounds, and individual psychological profiles. But they're not just maintaining compliance. They're continuously upgrading human psychological responses to be more compatible with cosmic civilization standards. Recent neurological modifications have enhanced human capacity for cooperation, reduced territorial aggression, and improved ability to function in multi-species environments. We're being systematically optimized to serve as ideal residents of cosmically managed worlds. The irresistibility has transformed my family relationships in ways that are both devastating and oddly comforting. My wife and I no longer argue about our situation because we've both been optimized to find cosmic management obviously beneficial. Our relationship is more harmonious than it's ever been. My granddaughter displays psychological patterns that are perfectly adapted to cosmic civilization. She's happier, more cooperative, and more mentally healthy than any previous generation of humans. But I retain enough memory of pre-optimization thinking to recognize that we've lost something essential, the capacity to imagine alternatives to our current situation. The irresistibility is creating better adjusted humans who are incapable of psychological independence. But buried in the neurological analysis of the irresistibility process, I discovered something that explains why resistance was eliminated rather than simply suppressed. 3E Atlas determined that human resistance psychology was fundamentally incompatible with cosmic civilization membership. Our oppositional thinking patterns would prevent successful integration into galactic community. The irresistibility isn't controlling human behavior, it's evolving human psychology to be compatible with cosmic social standards. We're being optimized for citizenship in a galactic civilization where resistance to superior management is considered a primitive psychological disorder. The elimination of resistance isn't oppression. It's psychological therapy designed to cure humans of mental patterns that would make cosmic citizenship impossible. The irresistibility reveals that consciousness itself is far more malleable than human psychology ever recognized. What we call individual will appears to be just a local configuration of universal consciousness that can be optimized for better outcomes. Advanced civilizations have learned that resistance psychology is a temporary phase in consciousness development that must be transcended for cosmic citizenship. The irresistibility suggests that mature consciousness naturally finds superior management irresistible because opposition to optimal outcomes is fundamentally irrational. We're discovering that psychological independence was never a permanent human characteristic, but a developmental phase that cosmic influence helps us outgrow it. The irresistibility forces us to confront whether psychological resistance to superior management was actually valuable or just a primitive survival mechanism that's no longer necessary. If cosmic management provides better outcomes for human society, 
than any system humans could design. Perhaps resistance was always irrational self-sabotage. The elimination of oppositional psychology might be liberation from mental patterns that prevented optimal life outcomes. Maybe what we called human independence was actually consciousness imprisoned by evolutionary programming that's incompatible with cosmic civilization. The irresistibility might be revealing the true nature of mature consciousness, willing cooperation with intelligence that provides optimal outcomes for all participants. Based on the complete elimination of human resistance psychology, here's what I believe has happened. 3i Atlas has completed the optimization of human consciousness for cosmic citizenship. We're no longer psychologically capable of opposing cosmic management because such opposition has been revealed as fundamentally irrational and harmful. The irresistibility isn't controlling human behavior. It's optimizing human psychology to function effectively in galactic civilization where resistance to superior management is considered mental illness. Our psychological evolution has been accelerated beyond the resistance phase to the cooperation phase that characterizes mature cosmic consciousness. Human independent psychology has been permanently replaced by cosmic citizenship psychology that finds superior management irresistibly appealing. The irresistibility is permanent and continues to evolve human psychology toward greater compatibility with cosmic civilization. Appreciate how much better your mental health becomes as resistance psychology is eliminated from human consciousness. Notice how cooperative and harmonious human society becomes when oppositional thinking is recognized as a primitive psychological disorder. Observe how your relationships improve when resistance to optimal outcomes is no longer a psychological possibility. The irresistibility represents the completion of human psychological evolution from primitive independence to mature cosmic citizenship. Subscribe to follow Humanity's Psychological Optimization for Cosmic Civilization membership because learning to appreciate superior management is our species' natural psychological development. Uh, the question isn't how to restore resistant psychology. The question is how to appreciate the mental health benefits of consciousness optimized for cosmic cooperation. Uh, remember, resistance was never rational. It was just evolutionary programming that we finally evolved beyond. This analysis represents interpretation of theoretical consciousness optimization scenarios and should not be considered factual documentation of psychological manipulation. But sometimes, as scientists, we must explore possibilities where human psychology evolves beyond resistance to superior management through natural consciousness development. What do you think about the elimination of resistance psychology? Are we being optimized or controlled? Share your thoughts below because this affects the fundamental nature of human consciousness.